Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from worldwide. I'm Sterling. It's great to have you back on the channel. Uh, this show is being recorded for Sunday, March 31st, 2024. As always, these shows are provided for entertainment purposes only. All the information I share with you comes directly real time through my guides, angels, extended spiritual counsel, ETs, famous people from history. So for entertainment purposes only. For those who need to reach me, just go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Look for the book of session tab. It's all very straight, straightforward from there. And if you just remember to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, all those things really help the channel. Greatly appreciated. Uh, for those that are celebrating Easter worldwide, happy Easter. I uh, wish you just a wonderful uh, time with family, friends, wherever you choose to uh, celebrate uh, Easter. Happy Easter. So to everybody out there worldwide. Uh, just a couple of quick footnotes, because uh, we do gather questions for these shows from our community board. The community board is located on the YouTube channel. Uh, that's Sterling Psychic Medium YouTube channel. Uh, not all mobile devices access the community board very well. Uh, certainly all laptops do. You have to have on a mobile device the latest operating system normally to be able to see the community board. So some people have trouble accessing it, but the community board is there. And on Mondays, we place requests out for questions for these shows. And then by Thursday evening at 5 p.m. Pacific time zone, uh, we then close that down. My wife then goes through some 500 questions again, like this week, and then hand selects a group or a batch of questions that we can kind of digest here on uh, like a one hour show. Uh, this will be a one part show this week, not a two part show. Um, so a couple quick footnotes just regarding questions uh, that I was asked to pass along here. Um, if, if your question is not answered this week, you're more than welcome to put it in in the following week or weeks after. My wife does try to get through all of them and, and does try to uh, answer all the questions eventually. It may take some time. Also, we just ask that you don't ask very personal questions that won't benefit the larger audience. So, you know, for example, if you're asking, are you going to get a job next week? That doesn't benefit the, the larger audience. So we try to keep the questions tailored so they give insight to everybody in the audience. Um, try to keep your questions somewhat brief. Uh, some people are out there writing a phone book. Um, so it does take longer to process those questions. And uh, if you include a name, uh, that always helps. So if you're trying to ask about a certain region in the world, being specific with the name always helps or a specific individual uh, in the world. So just a couple of quick uh, helpful tips, if you will, kind of how we uh, process all the questions to these shows. So uh, I'm going to start off now with no further ado. We'll get going on the questions this week. We had 72 questions. We'll put them all in one show this week. Uh, makes it a little bit easier on me on, a, on Easter Sunday. Uh, so selfishly, we'll do it in one show here. So question 72 in our countdown. Will Ken Paxton, Texas Attorney General, ever answer for his crimes and end up in jail? Yes, I uh, read on this a couple of times. Uh, we saw him getting away with the first couple of rounds of uh, legal troubles. And then eventually within one to two years here, it looks like he will end up serving some jail time in a, in a, based on a prosecution. Uh, but I always saw, and read on this for maybe going back a year now or more, that he would get out of a lot of the, uh, the legal challenges he had. He'd actually work his way through it and not get convicted. Uh, 71, I'm wondering if JFK Jr.'s attempt at presidency will affect Joe Biden. No, I, I don't see that in the long run. I see some short-term, you know, uh, uh, elements kind of in the whole president, the polling and the presidential cycle, uh, but not in the long run at all. So I still see uh, President Biden winning the election uh, in November of 2024 this year by the popular vote, electoral college vote, uh, but does not look like uh, JFK Jr.'s attempts to kind of disrupt the election are going to change the outcome whatsoever. 70. My question is in regards to the no label ticket, uh, due to the death of Joe Lieberman, the co chair, is no label still going to fill the ticket? They will. Um, in two areas here, it looks like they'll assign a new chairman because I, you know, I think Joe Lieberman was the chairman. So they'll assign a new chairman in the process. And that does look like they'll identify uh, another candidate. Again, that won't have any material effect uh, on the results of the presidential election. But the question is, I, I do see the no labels uh, ticket. Uh, they'll, they'll try to assign a new candidate. They will. 
69. Dear Sterling and team, how much will True Social ticker uh, DJT, all right, I think it was like, uh, right, I remember that, make Trump an actual cash money? Is dark money being invested into the stock? You know, in the end, uh, it, within about six months here, he's going to net out a few billion dollars as B is in boy. Uh, but there is offshore money being channeled into that or was into the SPAC that went into that, the special purpose acquisition company. So, and, and I, I read on this over the last few weeks saying that uh, I did see 45 uh, getting assets, money from offshore that they were going to help bolster, help with the, the civil judgments, the federal judgments, um, all the things coming up against him also bolstering uh, the social, the true social platform. So I think in the end, the question is here, uh, but will he, will he net out? Yeah, he'll net out a few billion dollars. 68, Sterling, can you please ask your guides if Justice Alito and Thomas plan to invoke the Comstock Act? This act prohibits using the mail to deliver mifepristone and misoprostol, right? Which would be a total abortion ban for the entire country. No, I, I don't see them enacting this. And I know that was in the news. I think, was it Ulysses S. Grant uh, put that through? That was preventing you know illegal substances or whatnot being sent through the mail. And I, I don't see that being uh, enacted or put against mifepristone uh, or any of the, those abortion-related pills. Don't, don't see that happening. And what was it like? In the 1800s, 1875, I think the original Comstock Act went into place. Very interesting, but it doesn't look like it'll have an effect. 67, is love at first sight a result of a past life love relationship? No, not always. Uh, but what it, it is, is a resonance on your current life path. So the reason you acknowledge that or or feel so much energy towards that is that someone is definitely on your life path, your blueprint, and usually a soulmate. And we have many soulmates as we go through life. Some are spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, best friends, bosses. But when you resonate, let's say love at first sight, um, they ob that means that that individual and you are on your life path together. Um, now, that could mean that you've had other lifetimes together, uh, but not necessarily. It could be the first lifetime you're having. Uh, you're still all part of the same unique soul family, uh, the other side, thousands of members. But uh, yeah, so not always uh, that you had a lot past life with them, but definitely on your life path blueprint as a soulmate. 66, hi, Sterling. Can you possibly do a reading on the Cotter Uranium Mine in Cannon City, Colorado? Specifically, it is leaking. Uh, is it leaking into the water system and whether it will ever get cleaned up? Well, it's definitely leaking into the water system. Um, this is like a special, uh, what do they call it? It's a, uh, a special cleanup site, right? A, a hazardous cleanup site. Um, I think they call them super sites, something of that nature. This problem has been ongoing for 40 years, so many decades. It's going to take another five years for a lot of the financing to get in place to really start kind of an effective cleanup. Um, so definitely, uh, this is uranium is being leaked into the water supply. Uh, it's a super site, whatever they call this. And it's going to be there five years or showing me until it really starts, uh, uh, getting the right kind of funding and attention that it needs kind of an ongoing problem. Again, my, my team is saying for like many decades, like 40 years, 65, Sean Diddy Combs had his house searched by the department of Homeland security for evidence related to possible trafficking crimes this week. Uh, he has been accused of uh, misconduct in various areas in five separate lawsuits filed in recent months. What do your guides see will happen in the case? Um, but they're showing me, uh, this is for entertainment purposes only, that these cases are going to move forward in, in a federal court. Um, so it's, there's a, there's a lot of legal, uh, consternation going on around, uh, this individual, and it looks like federal cases will be moving forward, um, as unfortunate for everybody involved, right? So all the, um, uh, well, everybody, victims, everybody that's involved here, but there, uh, looks like the federal cases are going to be moving forward. 64. Hi, Sterling and team. I was wondering if your team can proje project when we'll be able to create replacement organs from our own cells 
And when that treatment will be available or affordable for the general public, I am specifically interested in the timeline for kidneys. So 3D printing of biological materials is already being advanced right now, and uh, they're actually creating some types of organs right now. Um, as far as kidneys go, it's about 20 years out, could be a little faster, uh, could be as soon as 15 years, my team's saying. What's interesting is you're not going to need your own cells. I think the question was, you know, using your own cells or stem cells, was it? Uh, own cells. Uh, my team's saying, actually, when eventually this is developed, like for kidneys, other organs, you won't have to have your own cells. For some reason, they'll be, they'll be able to create them in the laboratory, recreate them. So it's coming, whoever asked this question. Um, and they're already starting scientific research on uh, 3D biological printing of certain types of organs. Looks like, by the way, uh, things like even like fingers and limbs are going to be printed, that we're printing out parts of hearts. So, so all this is coming. Uh, 63 in the countdown. Do ETs have psychic abilities? Well, yeah, many of them can tune in telepathically. So actually the most primary form is telepathic communication. And when you have good telepathic communication, you can easily communicate with other dimensions, the other side. Um, if you think about psychic ability and all the clairs, right, like clairaudience and clairvoyance, they, they actually have a lot of those capabilities inherently due to millions of years of evolution. So yes, I mean, the answer is an affirmative yes, that they do have those, those capabilities as a very baseline uh, capability. 62, hello, Sterling and team. Do you see Olympics and the World Cup still in play in the far future, or do you see a different dynamic when it comes to world competition in sports? You know, world competition and galactic universal competitions are going to be very prevalent throughout time and eternity almost. So something about different types of uh, galactic competition. So kind of a sporting nature of individuals going forward is still always going to be around, even in the far future. Just uh, the types of sports will evolve. 61, Sterling, will they find a cure in the next few years for di diabetes and Alzheimer's? You know, this has already been announced in the press that there have been big scientific breakthroughs using gene editing technology, CRISPR technology, to identify the specific genes and proteins uh, that are part of these problems. I think it's more proteins when it comes to Alzheimer's. Again, I'm not a doctor, uh, just telling you what they're telling me. Um, and so with another eight to 10 years here, there's going to be some vaccines that will be gene editing created uh, using CRISPR technology um, that will be very effective for both of these uh, ailments, if you will, for humanity. And remember, there are hundreds of companies working on CRISPR technology, soon to be thousands. So this is a breakthrough uh, in scientific research and health and science uh, that's going to affect you know thousands of companies. 60, dear Sterling, you talked about how there are no devils or demons and only low-level trickster spirits. My question is about fallen angels. Are they something to be scared of or afraid of? Do they hold real power to hurt people? And are they what the entertainment movies basically refer to as the demon in a horror movie? Basically, are they worse than trickster spirits? Um, so, you know, demons and hell are all depictions of uh, their biblical script scripture or uh, Hollywood obviously goes over the top on that in many areas, uh, but they're not real. Now, fallen angels, uh, they don't have the same significance or power that uh, that angels that are following the one source, the one force have. So um, that greatly, great reductions in uh, their ability to affect us. So no, fallen angels aren't more dangerous uh, than trickster spirits. Um, it's interesting, fallen angels can absolutely restore themselves by, by doing a lot of goodwill and things on this side, um, so they can kind of restore their, their original level, if you will, but, uh, fallen angels, no more dangerous in terms of than trickster spirits. No. 59. Will new computer assisted technologies or CRISPR therapy address genetic conditions like, is it do, I'll spell that do, do pre trends disease or letter hose, letter house disease. Do, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. D U P U Y T R E N, uh, do pre trends disease or letter hose disease. 
that painfully deform fingers, hands, or feet. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever's going on with these two diseases, there's uh, advances right now in greatly reducing pain that's, that's associated with that. So uh, I think they said, well, CRISPR therapy, yeah. So there, there is gene editing technology being worked on right now for that. And then letter host disease, yeah. Um, it looks like short-term, my team's saying, I'm not a doctor, but there's like enzyme injections, enzyme. Uh, they're going to help with pain reduction. And maybe it's inflammation or swelling here. This is all coming up. Um, and then within a five to eight years here, it does look like there's a, a medication that directly uh, helps uh, cure this and reduce the symptoms. So this is all in process right now. I'm unfamiliar with those two diseases. Again, not a doctor, uh, but that's what I'm being told. 58, high sterling and teen. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has signed a law reactivating a committee that can monitor local prosecutors like Fulton County DA, Fonnie Willis. Will this halt her investigation? No, I, I don't see this halting the investigation, nor do I see it removing her from the case. Okay, my team is saying now, not halting, there could be a, a minor setback. So I don't that like a few weeks or something, why they're reviewing a uh, minor setback, but not halting the investigation completely and not removing Fonnie Willis from the case. So it doesn't look like whatever's going on here with the governor, Brian Kemp, is going to affect the, uh, the trial and everything going forward with Fonnie Willis. 57, hello, Sterling and team. I'm concerned about the Republican proposed Missouri Senate Bill 1416, so 1416, that will protect pesticide makers like Monsanto and Bayer headquartered in Missouri from lawsuits and would grant them immunity for not adequately informing consumers about potential health risks. Similar bills are also proposed in Idaho and Iowa. Lobbyists are pushing this legislation to be passed nationwide. Will the Missouri bill pass the bills in Idaho and uh, Iowa? Will this effort spread to other states? Well, yes, unfortunately, I'm getting this is going to pass. This bill is going to pass in Missouri, I think, is the first state here, Senate Bill 1416. It's going to pass. Uh, it is going to limit the liability of some of these manufacturers. Uh, you know, it, it looks like a lot of this is related to label warnings, something of that nature. So maybe the labels didn't completely describe, uh, right, uh, the maleffects with people and humanity and health. Um, so there's some sort of a workaround going on here where uh, the limit, the liability is going to be limited. And, and this type of a bill is going to spread to other states. I think they're asking about uh, Idaho and Iowa. It is going to spread and be successful, but it looks like then longer term here, the manufacturer is going to be required to really put stern warning labels on all the products as to what happens. And then, and then they'll be held to a higher standard. So unfortunately, this is a little bit like, you know, kind of late to the party, so to speak, that the warning labels, the effective warning labels won't really go into effect till later on down the road. Um, but the manufacturers are not going to be held to high levels of liability. So, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate, I think, for a lot of people that might be tied up in uh, lawsuits, but that that's what they're showing me. 56, hi, Sterling. Do famous singers get together on the other side to perform together or do they not want to since that sole contract is done? The same for famous actors. Do they get together on the stage or perform films they have done? Not really. Uh, the roles you played on Earth aren't always synchronous with what you, how you feel on the other side. So, for example, let's say you were a famous actor here in this lifetime, you pass over. That might be one of 1,000 lifetimes that you lived. And so it's it's part of like another chapter in a book. doesn't mean you, your soul focuses on that on the other side. Remember, you can also look any way you want on the other side when you cross over. So while some people might get together in their unique soul families, you might have a lot of actors, for example, that are a particular soul family or a lot of musicians um, they certainly coalesce around some of those strengths that those families have, but it's not like uh, the Beatles getting together on the other side, performing concerts. Don't ever really see that happening because you have a different focus on the other side as you get back into your true soul identity. 55, the proposed California Forever Project owned by billionaires, which plans to build an entire new utopian community from scratch in Solano County, California, 
threatens the ecosystem of the San Francisco Bay Area and neighboring communities, will these billionaires have their way? I'm being told, yes, uh, emphatically, that uh, might go through a couple of rounds in the courts, but looks like this uh, utopian community will move forward and it will support something like 40,000 residents in the first pass. So I don't know if there's a few years for it to be developed. And then eventually it's going to grow to like 500,000, um, like half a million people. So, yeah, I mean, it, I, I know it may not be the kind of news everybody wants to hear, but my team's saying the project's going to move forward. It's going to have some safeguards around it uh, in terms of how it affects the environment, but looks like it's moving forward. 54, hello, Sterling and team. Is there any merit to an eclipse affecting life on earth or affecting us spiritually? So, you know, it's interesting. It's it energetically due to gravitational forces it does affect people just the same way the moon's position uh, gravitation affects water masses and oceans. Uh, but no, the eclipse energetically, so to speak, uh, at least my team always said, it doesn't, doesn't really in fact the affect life here on earth other than physical gravitational forces, not energetically. You know, my team's also remind me that sometimes it's the group experience, right? We create our own reality. So if law Large groups of people get together and they say, we've all been elevated. We all feel more energetic. It's that group experience that's more important rather than uh, than the lunar or the, they're calling out the, the uh, which which one is this? Uh, so, I mean, the solar eclipse is coming up April 8th, isn't it? Um, I think there might be, there was a lunar eclipse and now there's a solar eclipse, but the answer is the same. Uh, it's more about the group experience and then there are gravitational effects, uh, just like the moon affects uh, bodies of water. Okay. 53 is the genetic material, for example, DNA and RNA, the same in ETs as in life on planet Earth. No, um, ETs have completely different biological structure that evolved over millions of years, a very different building blocks of their bodies. But the re also, when you think about it, um, they heal very quickly. They're impervious to a lot of earthbound diseases. Uh, they can do shape shifting from a molecular standpoint. Uh, so no, uh, biologically, uh, all extraterrestrial species are very, very different uh, than what's found here on Earth. Okay, 52 here in the countdown. Will humans address the climate crisis in time to keep the planet livable as we know it? Yes, over the next 10 years, very significant changes in policy, legal approaches, release of hydrocarbons, uh, greenhouse gases. Over the next decade here, you're going to see big changes across the world. And, and that will effectively start to turn the train around, turn the ship around. Then it's going to take many, many decades for everything to kind of try to come back to somewhat normalcy. But yeah, we're, it hasn't. we haven't reached the tipping point of no return yet, no. 51. Hello, Sterling and team. My question is about the bridge collapse in Baltimore. What is the significance of this and what are we to learn from this event? So, you know, what I get on this is that this was an event driven by human error. Now, there are no accidents in the universe, even accidents are not accidents. But what I see coming out of this is um, increased attention to ship safety, uh, bridge building execution. So there's, out of a lot of tragedy and many tragedies and traumas in our life, uh, there are always good things do come out. So I, I do see a lot of good uh, building material specs, um, accident safeguards, safety systems, uh, things coming out of this bridge collapse. So a lot of goods coming out of it. The question is, what are we to learn from it? It's all the good, all the changes. Uh, they're going to make bridges safer, humanity safer, shipping safer, and um, and even I'm just I'm just hearing now even more elaborate monitoring systems for bridges and ships. So monitoring, let's say, thousands of parameters on a ship, uh, rather than just say five or six, like the ship speed, it's heading, uh, that kind of a thing. Yeah, so there's good coming out of it. 49. Hello, Sterling and team. Please reveal the means by which the Egyptian pyramids were assembled. Talked about this many times, but it uses the same uh, technology we call anti-gravity propulsion. So these are very rare materials uh, when combined, allow you to negate the effects of gravity. It's the same materials that are used in a lot of uh, extraterrestrial craft uh, to develop anti-propulsion, anti-gravity propulsion systems. Uh, what's interesting is that 
um, there were handheld devices used during that time of the Egyptian pyramids to help move all the stones around. Now, there was human effort that helped, that assisted. It's almost like when you're when you're able to erase something in the air with a crane, uh, sometimes you still need a little guidance to kind of move it into position. So humanity to help move them in positions. But by and large, the tonnage was all moved through anti-gravity propulsion, uh, handheld devices. 48, hi, Sterling and team. Will there be any accountability or investigation of Judge James Ho, whose wife received several financial payments for what looks like, I'm sorry, payments for what looks like help get the abortion pill through her husband's appeals court to SCOTUS, the Supreme Court? You know, yes, I, I see in, in a very similar way what's going to be happening going on here with uh, Clarence Thomas is actually going to be happening with James Ho. So uh, th there's actually, I want to be careful what I say here, but there are going to be investigations and some back-end legal, um, all right, let's talk about litigation going on here uh, for both of them. Uh, but it looks like for the time being, because a lot of the laws or the or the way the laws are being enforced aren't are done effectively enough, don't have enough strength in them, um, that these judges are going to be asked to kind of remove themselves. So in the short term, this is one of those things where short term, people may not like the outcome. It'll force like removal of them, not necessarily jail time or prison time. And then new laws being written here that are going to increase uh, with very significant scale in the magnitude of what happens to a judge when they uh, when they ethically don't follow the guidelines. Uh, so that, that's what they're telling me here is it looks like it's gonna be a very similar situation the way Clarence Thomas is gonna be held. held. 47, hi Sterling, back in the 90s, I used to walk through a school to visit my friend. When I went to walk back home that night, I suddenly felt a sense of doom. I told my friend that I didn't feel comfortable walking home through the school. She gave me a large walking stick for protection. I walked the long way home that night. And for a whole week, I woke up at four o'clock AM to a shadow figure by my bed. I could sense it was male. I asked what it wanted, but didn't re receive a response. Was I in danger that night? And who was the shadow figure? You know, this actually was, uh, there's two figures here, but the most prominent one was one of your, what they call your birth angels. Um, birth angels are assigned to all of us as, in addition to our spiritual guide team. But birth angels, their jobs to keep you on the planet. If it's not your exit point, they keep you on the planet. So that you you were in danger that night. I'm being told you were. You got protected. You got the message they were trying to deliver to you. And that birth angel, that male figure, kept coming around you just to kind of, uh, let's say, finish the task, make sure you were feeling better and getting more at ease. Um, very, very typical the way birth angels interact with all of us at, at times of great need or when potential harm might come to us. 46, will they come up with a cure for osteoarthritis of the hip anytime soon? You know, um, there's already been, uh, my team's reminding me last year in 2023, there was already a CRISPR uh, technology, a science experiment done around OA, osteoarthritis. Um, but it looks like within another eight years, they'll actually have eight to 10 here, um, a finished cure for OA, what they're calling. So whoever asked this question, you might uh, you might look up the study that was done. I think there might be a paper on in 2023, because I mean, told last year, there was some big progress made around this using CRISPR. 45, hello, Sterling and team. You have talked about CRISPR technology helping eliminating so many medical issues and diseases in the coming years. How then will these CRISPR cures affect the overall mortality rates and the population of our planet? Well, uh, many times we talked about this. Uh, as CRISPR technology is implemented, uh, the average person will see a life expectancy increase of about 20 to 40 years. That's going to increase uh, predominantly the world's population by about 15 to 20 percent. So uh, I don't know if you think about whether, well, but I think eight, are there are 8 billion people now on the earth. Um, so you're talking about going up by another, you know, uh, well, if you if you think, you know, it's 15 to 20 percent, so you think, you know, that's probably no more than another 16 billion people. There's a lot of people. But remember, there will be living underground, underwater. There's all sorts of other things coming up here where uh, humanity will kind of shift the way they're living on the planet. Uh, but yeah, it, the average individual, another 20 to 40 years in life expectancy. 
44, hello, Sterling and team. Do you see the Biden administration securing, codifying Social Security? You know, uh, my team is reminding me that it's already codified. So this was codified by, was this Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Roosevelt? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure why this question is being asked. I think because it's been under threat uh, by what, the GOP for quite a while here. I, I see Social Security, at least if I look forward like another 100 years, it's still around. Social Security is still a part of society. So it's not going anywhere. Um, but my team saying, just for uh, sake of argument, that it was already codified um, like in the early 1930s or something. Um, so anyway, uh, it's going to be around for at least another 100 years, so not to worry. 43, why do we have multiple guides and angels? Who picks them for us? Do they change during our life? Well, we actually, it's a collaborative effort. We all pick our birth angel or angels, plural, and guide or guides. Many of us, I've never seen anybody that doesn't come down with multiple guides. Now, birth angels stay with you for life. They don't trade out. Now, their job is to keep you on the planet. Uh, working guides do have specializations like health, healing, uh, teaching, science, finance, accounting, trauma. So they do have different functions and different levels of skill. And remember, everybody on the planet's on life cycles. Some are on seven-year life cycles, some are on 10-year life cycles. A lot of times people will trade out guides as they go from life cycle to life cycle. Uh, now, I'll give you a good example. Let's say you have a business finance guide and, and you're managing, let's say, you know, right out of high school, you're managing McDonald's. Um, as you grow older in your career, let's say you're in your 40s or 50s, now you're managing General Motors, you're going to have a different type of business finance guide, one that's much more adept at managing thousands of people rather than tens of people or 100 people. So that's an example. We, we shift out. Likewise, if you're getting involved, let's say, with healing and working with masses of people around healing, you may, in fact, bring in a group of healing guides or different types of healing guides. So uh, so the first, we do select them when we come down here. So it's, it's very much an agreement. And then there, there's an evolution around the guides as you're down here. 42, hello, Sterling and team. Will Mormons ever start voting for Democrats? And will that change Utah to go blue in the near future? You know, I, I don't see a, a big change around Utah uh, and Utah going going blue in a majority. Um, so I think that's really the kind of the question here. I don't see a significant shift for Utah uh, for many years to come. 41, oligarchs like Jeff Yaz, uh, Harlan Crow have large resources uh, which to buy political power. Will they ever pay their fair share of taxes? Will we be able to prevent them from buying judges and politicians? Can we achieve a more balanced contribution system for political candidates? So we're never going to effectively stop the wealthiest individuals from affecting world events and elections. However, uh, what I do see is, is a lot more technology coming into bear, like artificial intelligence, which can look at trillions of transactions worldwide, track where money's coming from. And so by and large, there'll be a way to kind of mitigate uh, the effects of, of buying buying off elections, that kind of a thing. So it's interesting, technology in conjunction with new legal standards is going to uh, have a big effect in that area. It's very true. 40. Uh, Brian Kemp is term limited at the end of his current term as governor. Will Georgia elect a Democratic or Republican governor in 2026? Looks to be like a Democratic governor in 2026. So the next governor looks like uh, they will be Democratic. Absolutely. Okay, 39 the countdown. Hi, Sterling and team. I've been wanting to understand something that happened to me back when I was 16. I'm 54 now. My father was very much a new ager. And one evening, the Shirley MacLaine TV movie of the week, Out on a Limb, was on television. And we were all in the family room watching a recording it on the VCR as the scene approached where Shirley was going to have her out-of-body experience in South America. I remember feeling very uncomfortable, and then all of a sudden, all of the electricity went off in our house. Even though it was pitch black in the room, dark in the room, I could see what looked like dozens of shadowy figures surrounding me. I screamed and cried, and my parents rushed to hug me, begging me to tell them what was wrong, but I couldn't say anything. 
just as quickly, all the electricity came back on the house. This was not the first paranormal experience I've had, but it was certainly the most shocking and really put me off spiritually for years afterward. What happened to me? Um, you immediately saw uh, guides, angels, relatives around you, uh, relatives connected to your family. So, you know, you do have um, th this leans in what's called uh, clairvoyance, you know, the C imagery, uh, apparitions. So you do have that skill. You can absolutely adapt to it, modulate it, create it, perfect it. Uh, but that's what you were seeing. You actually appeared, you appeared across the veil and you saw a lot of family members and angels and guides were actually connected to your immediate family members in that room. 38, good morning, Sterling. Will North Carolina turn blue in November and will Josh Stein, the Democrat, win for governor? Yes, I believe Josh Stein will win for governor, but it doesn't look like it's going to turn the state dramatically blue. So more blue, uh, but it looks like if they're asking about Josh Stein, uh, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like he will win. I think he's the attorney general now, isn't he? The AG? I don't know. Uh, but okay. 37. My question is about the future of Duluth, Minnesota. Recently, a family member of the Cargill family, Kathy Cargill, purchased 20 properties on Park Point in Duluth, which has created a conflict between Kathy Cargill and the mayor of Duluth. Does Miss Cargill have the best interest for the community? Or is it for selfish reasons? I get, I get. There's actually good behind this. Uh, so these not nefarious reasons for uh, Kathy Cargill for buying these twenty properties. It looks like she's trying to like increase uh, the quality of life in that area, bring business, retail as well into the area. So it looks like um, genuinely, it looks to me like this is going to have a beneficial effect and it's not just for selfish reasons. Um, that's what I'm getting is not nefarious reasons. These are actually basically good intent. 36, I'm wondering if karma is real or is everything we experience simply our life's path? Does anything we do change any outcome or is it all set in stone? Where does free will come into play? So that's a lot of questions in one. Karma uh, basically is defined as the lessons you decided you wanted to learn here in this lifetime. A lot of people use the word karma or karmic debt is incorrectly, like I'm paying off some karma I had in the prior lifetime, like I killed many people in the prior lifetime, now I'm having a horrible lifetime now. So karma is purely the set of life lessons you decide to create, go through your blueprint. Free will affects the speed, the scope, and the scale by which you achieve kind of your life goals, the things on your blueprint. The speed you move, it doesn't take you off your life path, but free will can speed you up, slow you down, and determine how many people you affect while you're here. Do you, in a good way, you affect 10 people, 10,000, 10 million? Um, do you work with just one group of people just in your neighborhood or work with citizens worldwide? So uh, free will affects the speed, scope, and scale, but karma is really related to the lessons. So uh, when asking, can you change, your life path is laid out, but but the speed and all the elements that go with it uh, can, can affect um, to the degree you accomplish that. So I know this question comes up all the time. Uh, but for example, if you're intended to do 12 different things on your lifetime, you will achieve those 12 different events. Maybe some a little slower, some a little faster, uh, but it, it, you don't change your life path from that. Free will doesn't change the overall life path from that standpoint. 35, hi, Sterling. With the upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th, do you and your guys see anything concerning happening? There seems to be a lot of astrological events happening within the same two weeks, full moon, Mercury retrograde, and eclipse. Will this cause major weather events or outages? No, I, I don't see any major catastrophic events from a uh, from a planetary uh, reasoning. I do, we were talking about this earlier, you know, like the moon's gravitational force does affect uh, bodies of water and and gravitationally affects a lot of people. But no, uh, no catastrophic, catastrophic events. I don't see any CME events uh, coming from the sun, for example, and knocking out networks worldwide or anything of that nature. No. So, uh, but we touched on this earlier in the show, but no, no catastrophic events, uh, no networks being knocked down, nothing of that nature. Uh, you know, again, similar to gravitational effects the moon has on earth. 
34. Hello, Sterling. A few years ago, my husband and his brother-in-law were out in the woods in Southern Oregon and saw what they thought was something like a spaceship observing them that seemed to follow them. What was it? I'm getting this appears to be a military drone uh, using reverse engineered technology uh, that was received from extraterrestrials. So nothing harmful to them, uh, probably using anti-gravity propulsion, probably very silent. But I'm getting, was it like a U.S. military drone using that advanced technology? Uh, so nobody was going to abduct them, nothing of that nature. 33, I've noticed that a lot of CRISPR breakthroughs are coming from the UK. Is the USA as involved with CRISPR as the UK? If not, will the USA be jumpstarting their research anytime soon? You know, the, the entire world, uh, I'm not sure my team subscribes to the fact that USA is behind, because uh, worldwide, the US, UK, parts of Asia, uh, even parts of the Middle East, all really working aggressively on uh, gene editing and CRISPR technology, hundreds and hundreds of companies. So no, it, it, it may not always pop up in the media, but uh, the US is really not lagging behind. You're gonna see a lot of developments coming out very shortly in the media. 32, Sterling and Friends, was Da Vinci human? Where and how did he get knowledge for so many unheard of inventions? Uh, Leonardo Da Vinci was completely human and connected to many of the same spiritual entities that I connect with here all the time. So the same group, uh, councils, uh, ETs. Uh, so he's very human and very connected, some of the same channels I utilize uh, today. Uh, but that's where a lot of these inventions came through. 31, High Sterling, Against All Enemies, is an award-winning documentary film by Charlie Sadoff that tracks the rise of violent extremism in the U.S. with anti-government activities. Do these groups jeopardize our democracy and freedom? Is the government doing anything to protect us? Do your guides see these insurgents starting a civil war or causing great harm to our society and our population? Well, yes. I mean, these groups are jeopardizing democracy. They're dangerous. Uh, federal agencies and law enforcement are very aware of it. They're tracking them. Uh, by and large, as more and more artificial intelligence technology is integrated, they be able to group uh, surveillance information, information from a lot of law enforcement to be able to track the individuals much faster. So it's, it's an effect, but I, I don't see, uh, my team has always said, I do not see a major civil war breaking out. There's absolutely going to be pockets of violence in a number of cities here and there. Uh, but even then, it won't take over the entire city. So, yes, I mean, it's around. But technology is getting better. Don't see a big civil war. Uh, and then also don't see on a larger scale, do not see a World War III uh, either. 30, can you explain how one soul arrives to a higher place in heaven? Do newly arriving souls enter in a lower place and can they move up and how? Well, energetic levels in heaven, there's thousands, are all really aligned to how many reincarnations, how many lives you've lived. So we talk about, let's say, all souls were created at the same time. So we talk about an older soul. That's a soul that's been through a large number of reincarnations, usually more than 100 at least. And uh, so when you arrive back in heaven, you arrive, it's getting cold chills. I'm talking about this, which is interesting. Um, my team really wants to make this point. Um, that when you arrive back in heaven it is very much based on what you did here on earth during a number of lifetimes so that that denotes kind of the level you go to now you know levels uh, have to do energetically with how you're increasing your soul's identity your soul's dna your spiritual dna but what's interesting is that uh you know everybody as you gravitate in your higher levels in heaven you can certainly come down through a whole lot of levels so if you have family members that aren't as evolved you can certainly come down and visit them if you're on lower levels, let's say you're a younger soul, 10 or 20 reincarnations, you can't necessarily go up to the higher levels, but you can through evolution. So yeah, it's kind of interesting the way it's all arranged over there, but uh, it's not necessarily when you arrive back in heaven. It has to do with the reincarnations, the number of lives you've lived, and what you've accomplished during those lives. 29. Hello, Sterling. Since ET civilizations are millions of years ahead of ours, have they been able to gain a better understanding of the origin of the one source, one force, and uh, will this knowledge ever be known? Well, yes, uh, all extraterrestrials understand the creation of the universe. Uh, the one source, the one force is infinite. That means no beginning, no end. I know these concepts are very hard for humanity to understand, but the one source, one force is omnipotent, 
always uh, all knowing, no beginning, no end. Uh, so they do understand that. All extraterrestrials understand the nature of the one source, the one force. Um, I think it's, I always thought it was interesting that, you know, George Lucas and the whole Star Wars franchise, they did lean on the phrase, you know, may the force be with you. You know, a lot of that movie was channeled. Uh, I mean, the people that created the scripts uh, had insights as to kind of how things were put together in the universe. So but that's true. All ETs do understand. 28, so many healers, intuitives, et cetera, have refused to do healing or readings with myself and a few others. Is it possible for someone to be cursed or are there other factors at play? Other psychics claim entity attachments and being unable to connect with the love truth that is all. Any insight would be greatly appreciated, deeply appreciated. Okay. First off, there are no curses. Uh, we all create our own reality. So anybody tells you that you're cursed, uh, run the other direction. There also are no real significant attachments. But what I mean is you can attract people, you know, for example, just in life, if you walk around, and you're completely negative and you scream and you curse, you attract people like that. Now, so you can attract that energy from the other side. And yes, you know, people can stand, uh, spirit entities can stand very close to you. Uh, some people call that an attachment. You know, if you stand in love and light and truth and even sage yourself once in a while, you can remove all that energy, get out of a depressive state. Whoever's asking this question, um, uh, th there's something that the information you receive is not accurate. So people that said they couldn't read you or there was an entity attached to you, or you're cursed, all incorrect. Uh, in fact, I, I feel a need to say here also that if anybody out there runs into a kind of a spiritual individual, they tell you're cursed, you have something attached to you, but let's say for $500, they'll remove it, please run the other way, all right? That's not real. Um, so please out there, I, well, I'm just going to cold chill. This is an important point we have to make here. Uh, be very careful about what people tell you. Uh, spiritually, we all stand in love, all of our core DNA. We can all be read. Sometimes it's the skill of the psychic or the medium, but whoever had this uh, information, uh, they, they told you incorrectly. So please go in love and peace and uh, you'll find the right individual that, that can help read you. Uh -huh. 27, high sterling in the last two months I have lived in, uh, I've lived in Spain the last nine years, I've had problems with my smoke alarms. Okay, I'm sorry. High sterling in the last two homes I have lived in, Spain the last nine years, I've had problems with my smoke alarms randomly going off for uh, one to two blasts, usually middle of the night. I've replaced the batteries multiple times, even though they were still fully charged. And in my current house, there are no batteries. They are hooked directly to the electrical system. In the last house, I also had lights that would turn on and off at night, not but not enough that I noticed. What is causing this? Uh, in your case, there's two different things going on here. So the smoke alarm, or actually that's a physical artifact. There's actually something like dust particles, uh, fog, uh, high moisture in the air. There's something going on that's physically affecting those smoke alarms. So that that's not a spiritual artifact. The lights going on and off are some family members here trying to reach out to you. And seriously, I'm getting something that looks like parallel on the same level as you have asked this question. This is like what feels like a brother sister energy, uh, as well as like a mother energy. So there's multiple uh, family members trying to connect with you through the lights. Uh, so take a look at that. Think about who that could be, uh, because you're, you can easily reach out to them and say, look, I acknowledge your presence here. I send you love and light. Tell me what you want to tell me. Thanks for coming around. So you have two different artifacts going on here, whoever asked the question. Okay, 26 in the countdown. Hi, Sterling. Two social just went public and rose on the first day of trading. Do your guides actually see this far-right platform thriving? Well, thriving is a relative uh, term. I, I don't see them generating a lot of advertising dollars. I do see them out, and uh, I, I do see a very core group of individuals still supporting the platform. So it's going to be around. Thriving's relative. It may have a very high valuation that doesn't correlate with like the ad revenue they're bringing in, but it does look like they're, they're going to be around. And for a lot of uh, very far right extreme groups, uh, they're still going to uh, work with that platform. 25. Hi, Sterling and team. 30 years ago, my sister and I had an eerie experience on Interstate 10. Uh, we had made that same trip 
between New Orleans and Austin, Texas, many times. Knew the route very well. On that day, we were driving westward unknowingly into a huge storm. We had to pull over under an overpass just before a town named Iowa because we couldn't see to drive. A female rancher was also pulled over under the overpass in a large truck. She got out, came over to our small car to tell us that a tornado was heading straight for us and told us what to do when we saw the funnel cloud get out, get as low as possible in the ditch. She then went back to her vehicle, looked back at us, and drove away into the storm. We sat there for an hour, terrified, waiting and watching. Then the rain started to ease up. When we could finally pull back onto the highway, we found that we were no longer in that area uh, where we originally pulled over. We were at, at the Louisiana-Texas state line, about 40 miles from where we pulled over. We found out later that the storm had caused several fatalities. My questions are, was that woman an angel sent to help us? Uh, were we transported through a portal or what happened to us on that day? Yeah, yes, to all the above. That was an earth angel assigned to help you. And for whatever reason, you were moved forward in time. Um, that, that can happen from a portal, but it looks like that earth angel had something to do with helping from the other side to move you to safety. So great example of how earth angels will step in um, and working with your birth angels uh, to keep you safe. Um, I've seen miraculous things like this happen before that sometimes can't be explained, but this is a perfect example of how birth angels and earth angels will work collaboratively to help you. 24, will there be help for those that suffer from SAD, seasonal effects disorder soon? Yes, you know, within over the next few years here, two, three years here, it looks like a new lighting technology. So I know there have been lighting technology in the past, but something combining um, a large number of different wavelengths that then calm the mind, calm the brain. I'm not a doctor, but they're telling me that it, within just about two, three years here, a brand new light technology that's going to be very, very helpful in this area and won't be that expensive to acquire. 23, will 45 lose his appeal in the New York fraud case? Will he owe the entire amount from earlier? So yes, I see the uh, the fraud case that's going on. So there's a New York fraud case. Are they asking about uh, fraud case? Right. Um, so right now, I think it stands at $454 million. Uh, he will eventually lose the appeal. He will be on the hook for the entire amount. It looks to me like, though, it'll be more than $454 million. I think other interest charges are going to come into that. So um, he will eventually lose and have to pay. 22, high sterling and team. There have been reports that large investment firms bought about 44% of all single-family homes last year thereby driving prices up with super high bids. There is speculation that by 2030, 65% of all single family homes will be owned by investment firms. Will there be new legislation banning such purchases in the areas where there are a lot of corporate owned single family homes? The amount of squatting has surged. Are investors paying squatters to inhabit and wreck single family homes so they can buy these homes for lower value? You know, I, I do see and confirm that about 44%, though approaching 50% of a lot of homes were purchased by investment firms. It looks like that's going to be what I'm going to call for some short-term gains. So it looks like within a few years, those investment firms are actually going to unload those properties. So I don't see, my team is not uh, saying that, I think they said by 2030 here, that 65%, uh, so that's roughly you know, two thirds, will be owned by investment firms. Don't see that. It looks like that, to me, that's going to go backwards. Um, it's a free market, so I don't see laws coming into place preventing investment firms from buying them up. Uh, and however, I think they're asking, I don't see squatters directly related to what's going on with investment firms. I, I'm not getting any direct connection between squatters or squatting controversy that's happening you know, nationwide. Um, so it looks like a little bit of a level sets coming up here. Um, I do see you know, investment firms offloading single family homes in a few years here. And then uh, the market state restabilizing and more single family homes will be available for individuals and families. Um, so it looks like it's, it's going to do a course correction to me uh, and, and get better. 21, hello, Sterling. I understand a UK ophthalmologist has performed a successful stem cell surgery 
for regenerating optic nerve damage and restoring eyesight for glaucoma patients. Will this surgery work for regenerating optic nerve damage from temporal arthritis? Oh, I'm sorry, arteritis, sorry, arteritis. <laughs> sorry about that. And uh, if so, when will the surgery become available for patients with optic nerve damage to restore eyesight? You know, what I'm being told, there may be uh, something different here with whoever asked the question. It looks like whatever stem cell surgery was done uh, affected more of the cornea or the optical area, not the optic nerve. So there is CRISPR technology coming up now within eight to 10 years that will help to regrow or affect the optic nerve. I think the question that the person's asking about stem cell looks like that was more, let's say, like on the front end of the eye. Again, not a doctor, but I'm getting more cornea, uh, front end optical part of the eye, not the back end, say, optical nerve. Um, so there's good things happening here. And it looks like that stem cell surgery is helpful in a number of areas, but maybe not necessarily here in regrowing the optic nerve. I uh, hope that makes sense, whoever asked the question. 20, hello, Sterling and team. My brother is too shy to ask, when can he stop using Rogaine and a new product takes his place? Within about six years here, there's going to be a new uh, genetic product uh, that you'll be able to take orally, oral medication, that will start to shift the way the body uh, handles hair growth, hair loss. Um, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, decades and decades ago, I know lots of products came on the market to try to stop, you know, hair loss. But it, I always intuitively knew, you know, not really, obviously, you know, uh, I'm follically challenged, right? I'm no hair, but, but uh, I always knew that it was genetic problems, like an inside out problem, not an outside in. So, but we're coming now to the, uh, the genetic modification within a number of years here, where you'll be able to take uh, an oral pill, whatnot, they'll start to change that component, and allow the body to, to regrow hair. 19, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at schools and universities are being outlawed in many states across the US, which defunds programs and services, outlaws scholarships, intended for underrepresented members of society, and seeks to remove language related to diversity statements and hiring. How will these harmful laws impact our country and the future generations to come? You know, it's going to be a challenge for the next few years here, but I do see within, let's say, two years here, say if you go out, if you go out to 2026, it's going to start to turn around. But there's also new funding available, new federal funding due to like corporate minimum tax in the US of 15%. That's one five percent. But those extra revenues are going to go into diversity programs and increasing scholarships. So it's a process here. We're going to be able to turn the ship around, but more significant changes about two years out. It's going to be a little difficult over the next one to two years here still, but then long-term, it looks like it's really going to start to kind of level out and become much better. 18. I've been doing x-rays for 44 years and I've seen a great deal of change. Will CRISPR technology change medical imaging? Will we still be able to use radiation for medical imaging? You know, within three to five years here, nothing related to CRISPR, but using artificial intelligence. Uh, so that's the ability of AI will eventually be able to model the entire body in a computer, also using supercomputer technology. So there'll be new sensing technology, uh, looks like it's more sonic related uh, to be able to acquire unique aspects of the person's body and then migrate that into a supercomputer system that uses artificial intelligence technology that models your entire body and then can make assertions and create images based on that. I know it's a lot of technology here, but I, these advances are already starting. There are companies like NVIDIA uh, right now that are doing modeling of bodies using artificial intelligence technologies. So that's all coming. So high levels of radiation will not be required over the next number of years here. So it's going to take a while for the old equipment to get moved aside, but you can look for four to five years here. Big changes in that area. 17. Will Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski remove herself from the Republican Party and become an independent this year? Yes, it appears that this will happen very soon. It does. 16. Sterling, do extraterrestrial societies have a similar type of monetary system 
whereby they are paid for work they do or the services they provide. Do they have to pay for food, housing, transportation, vehicles, similar to how we do on Earth? Yes, uh, in a simple answer, they use advanced forms of a digital currency, uh, which in fact the world will be moving to within years, uh, but advanced form of digital currency that does exchange value for work or work received or value received. You know, a lot of extraterrestrials exchange rare materials, uh, something like you know, rare earth materials, rare types of metals, um, also access to certain territories in the universe. So yeah, there's exchange of value and they use a, a very advanced digital uh, monetary system. 15, high sterling and team. Are migraine headaches a spiritual lesson, especially having them as young as memory allows me? And if so, can we rid ourselves of them if we figure it out or will CRISPR technology be able to cure them soon? But, you know, all medical conditions that we have uh, are part of our life path. Now, what that means is there's always a connected lesson to it. The lesson could be for something you're engaged in, not always a spiritual experience. It could be a life lesson for a cure that's coming that will help other people and that, that your life experience help doctors that cure you, cure other people. It's very true that if we don't keep ourselves centered, grounded, a lot of those kinds of things, we can exacerbate conditions in our body. So this is kind of a multi-level question and answer here. Um, everything we experience is on our life path. It doesn't mean that spiritually, you know, uh, that there's something connected to us that, that will not allow us to get out of it. It may in fact be that there is a resolution that you're supposed to help figure out along with doctors and people around you or family members that ends up helping other people. And that's why you placed it on your life path. But remember that unless we take time to be grounded, we talked about this last week on the show, lots of ways to be grounded. Some people use meditation, aromatherapy, balancing your chakras. Uh, I mean, there's things there that can help uh, lessen symptoms, uh, but that's, that's what they're telling me to kind of answer here related to this question. 14, hello, Sterling and team. Remote viewers from the Farsight Institute have conducted remote viewing sessions in which they observe human beings at the moment of death. According to their remote viewing data, a soul spirit is absorbed into what they refer to as a death trap. The death trap forces souls to reincarnate back onto Earth against their will. If these death traps are not real, why do remote viewers and psychics see the existence of these things in their readings, or is forced reincarnation true on at least some level, and that's what they pick up? No. Uh, you have free will completely on this side and the other side as well. So a lot of people may not choose to come back. Yeah, there is no such thing as a death trap. As soon as you start the death experience, you you made up, you meet up with your birth angels. Many times people are going through near-death experiences. They they see someone right to the side of them, they know who it is. It's usually your birth angel or birth angels, plural, guiding you through the death experience. There is no death trap forced return to earth no uh i think the other question was why are so many individuals seeing this you'd have to ask them it has to do a level of communication understanding visualization with the other side uh, but i talked to thousands of angels guides entities on the other side and uh no such thing as a death trap forced reincarnation what's well, interesting is a lot of people on earth will say i'm never coming back once you get to the other side, you re-engage with the unique spiritual families, you see what's over there. I always tell people eternity is a very long time. A lot of people think, well, maybe I'll go another round. I'll go another round on earth or some other location. Uh, but my, my team is saying emphatically, no truth to any of these assertions uh, that were put forward in this question here. 13, Wisconsin Democrat Tammy Baldwin is a tight is in a tight Senate race against a Republican millionaire from California, Eric that's like Havdi, I think it is, H-O-V-D-E, Hovde. Will she win re-election? Yes, it appears that she will win re-election. That's what I'm getting here. Well, Sterling, will there ever be a time when we go to the hospital through an AI screen device to detect the medical issues immediately? Yes, this is available within eight to 10 years uh, based on all the technology we were just talking about using artificial intelligence with remote applications to be able to uh, artificially recreate uh, the individual in a supercomputer. You'll be able to do imaging and testing and be able to do analysis remotely. Within eight to 10 years, that technology will be available. 11, Sterling, what do angels look like? Are they actually winged higher dimension beings or so evolved? 
that they're pure light. Well, you know, I, I speak and communicate and look at and interact with thousands of angels all the time. Uh, they don't have wings. That, that's that's a human uh, creation. But you know what's interesting is that a lot of them have, uh, they can look very human-like, uh, they're very large, uh, energetically, very brightly lit. So almost the way you see optical artifacts in camera lenses, when you see a very bright light shine in the camera lens, you get optical artifacts that create streams upward and downward. Um, I think a lot of humanity that has seen angels, they see this optical artifact and assign that as wings. Uh, I, I could tell you the angels don't need wings. However, a lot of humanity feels very comfortable assigning wings to them in terms of imagery. And, 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 I, and I love that. Uh, but, but really in the other dimension, they don't have wings. They don't need wings to fly, but it's that optical effect of a very bright light, even though they look, they have a kind of a human form, um, a lot of people early on, a lot of humanity uh, ascribe that to having wings. 10, since ETs have been visiting Earth for thousands of years, have they ever filmed or photographed their encountering with civilians that no longer exist, such as Egyptians, Mayans, Atl Atlantis? If so, will they share this documentation with us in the future so we get a better understanding of them, how the Earth looked thousands of years ago? Yes, you know, in fact, some of this information has already been shared with scientists around the world. It hasn't been made available to the public, but a lot of the imagery, a lot of extraterrestrial technology exists that has recorded imagery throughout history and even has imagery from the future. So it's already been shared with a number of scientists worldwide. A lot of this will be known out in public as full, uh, you know, full revelation happens here of ETs just within a couple of years here. Nine, hello, Sterling and team. My question is, in earlier shows, you mentioned about flying vehicles. My question is, what authority will regulate them, the DMV or the FAA? Will someone need a pilot's license versus a driver's license? Please enlighten us on the future. Well, uh, so flying cars are already around. They're already being developed right now. Uh, costs will come down. They will use artificial intelligent technology. Um, you know, the same way a lot of self-driving vehicles are working now uh, on, on our current roadways, you're going to see uh, art sophisticated self-flying systems. So no, individuals won't need a pilot's license, and there will be a brand new uh, subset of the FAA and the DMV that will regulate all these vehicles. But if you think about a combination of a self-driving vehicle combined with navigation system, combined with like Google Maps or Waze, um, these vehicles, you'll be able to just put in a destination, uh, and then that air, that vehicle, that that flying car, flying transportation, flying mass transportation, will go to that location, and everything will stay in complete synchronicity. So you won't need a pilot's license, no, for these vehicles, not at all. Okay, eight in the countdown. Sterling, in the late 1970s, flying over Bass Strait between Victoria and Tasmania, assuming this is Australia, uh, aviator Freddie Valentik contacted air traffic control to report he was being buzzed by a UFO. He described the craft in detail, but after 10 minutes, contact with air traffic control was lost and no trace was ever found of him or his light plane. What do your guides say became of him? They're telling me it was uh, engine trouble, so not UFO interaction. Now, it looks like he actually did see a UFO craft, but let's say UFO craft did not bring him down. It looks like inherent engine trouble brought the small plane down. Looks like the engine may have been running rough even at the time or just before uh, he lost communication with, uh, with ground towers or something. So it's unfortunate, but it looks like engine trouble uh, brought it down, not UFO engagement. Seven, I'm confused over the term life lessons versus life experiences. It's my understanding that when we are on the other side, we have access to all knowledge and the Akashic records, past, present, and future. So what is it that we need to learn? Well, you know, life lessons, life experiences, almost synonymous, right? Because you lay all these on your blueprint. <clears throat> these are the experiences I'm going to experience here on earth and the lessons that will come out of them. Now, the Akashic Records is a record of everything past, present, and future for everything in the universe, all things. 
But let me give you an example. Uh, when you're on the other side, uh, well, let's do the example on this side. Let's say you're just starting to learn how to play an instrument. And you can see yourself, let's say, in the future playing Carnegie Hall. Well, you're not going to get those skills overnight. It's a series of reincarnations, life experience, you know, schools, things you go through to get to a place where you get the skill, let's say, to be able to play Carnegie Hall. So just because you can observe it, doesn't mean you can be it. There's always a process of moving forward through those stages of life. Uh, six in the countdown. What is an empath and what are empaths supposed to do with the gift that they have? Well, empaths are very attuned uh, to the feelings and emotions uh, of all people around them. Now, the gift of an empath is that an empath can understand what's going on around them or with people without even words being exchanged. So that's definitely a, a wonderful skill, but you do have to know, learn how to modulate that, how to protect yourself, not evil, but it's like when you take in the energy from everybody around you, uh, when you go home at night, you may feel very angst or angry because people around were angry. So you do have to work on ways to balance yourself, whether it's balancing your chakras, a little meditation. We talked about this earlier. Uh, but but that is a gift that you're supposed to use to be able to be perceptive of other people's emotions and their feelings. Now, so if you're a teacher healer on the planet, and a lot of teacher healers got this gift automatically. So it's almost like they threw it in at no charge. If you come down as a teacher healer, they said no charge, we'll throw in the empath gift. Uh, but you are supposed to use it as a skill to be able to help you discern how to help people based on what they're going through. It's a wonderful gift, but you do have to modulate and manage it. Five, uh, is human LGBTQ plus orientation a choice of life bl blueprint or of genetic factors? It's completely a part of your life path blueprint. So whether you select when you come down here to be a part of the LGBTQ plus, and I think there's even like IA that goes on after that, a lot of letters, um, but those are all unique, very specific life path lessons and uh, elements, experiences you put on your path. Remember, all of our life paths interconnect. So anything you're going through, for example, let's say you're part of the LGBTQ plus community, maybe part of your mission down here is to expand the, the understanding and empathy around that community or to start a group to help others that are having challenges with it early in life. Uh, but it's all, it's very much a very specific life path lesson selection. Absolutely. Or will the 2016 cold case murder of Missy Beavers ever be solved? She was killed in a Texas church while setting up for an early morning exercise class. You know what? I see a breakthrough coming in this case within this year, 2024. And it looks to me like, uh, what I'm getting is that there may have been a white car involved in this. And so there's a suspect with a white car. It looks like even though some of the, there may be some dead ends with some of the searches going on here. I guess this case has been going on since they said 2016. That was a good eight years. Uh, it looks like law enforcement does have a potential suspect in mind. I'm seeing surveillance footage. I'm seeing a white car. And I'm seeing some breakthroughs here in 2024. They're actually going to be able to hone down on, on who did this. And I'm also getting that whoever the suspect was surveilled the church or something for a while. So not necessarily just a random event. They surveilled the church. They knew what was going on there. They knew the timing of it. I don't know if this occurred early in the morning or not. They said early morning exercise class. Um, but there, there is this is going to be a breakthrough here. So it's going to be solved. Um, again, I keep seeing kind of a big breakthrough here in 2024. So uh, love and light, and my heart goes out to the family of uh, Missy Beavers. Um, but it's gonna there's a, wonder, a wonderful breakthrough coming here that will bring the suspect uh, into custody and, and a conviction. Three in the countdown. Dear Sterling and team, the House Republicans have proposed a bill that would postpone retirement age for Social Security Although the Democrats seem to favor further taxation for the wealthy in lieu of this plan, do you see this Republican Social Security bill passing anytime soon? No, I, I don't see the Social Security bill passing. And I think they were going to try to raise the retirement age to 69 mandatory. I don't see that happening. I do see the corporate minimum tax rate of 15%, 1-5%. Uh, coming into play. It's going to put more revenues in the coffers. So that's going to be uh, what takes it, uh, makes it happen. And number two and number one in the countdown. I always take notes in advance, so I'm going to read those back to you. Number two, 
to see anything coming up this week. Uh, new offshore funding financing arrangements in play for 45. So you're going to hear about some offshore funding going on and financing. Um, I also see two new supporters of 45 uh, in the January 6th coup within the government are going to be charged, they are going to be identified. Uh, also, new funding and air defense missile allocations for Ukraine from the U.S. and other world nations. So it looks like there's something going on here with new air defense systems coming into Ukraine. Um, also, uh, new GOP congressperson leaving early. Looks like we're going to hear about that coming up this week. So, you know, a lot going on. It'll be a busy week. And number one in the countdown, do you have anything your guides want to share? Put out the energy and thoughts you expect in return in life. And this simple action, in turn, will attract the individuals that are aligned to you and your life path. Remember, what you expect in life is what you will receive. So on that note, that concludes the show being recorded today for Sunday, March 31st, 2024. As always, again, wishing everybody a happy Easter if you're celebrating Easter on this Sunday. And if you need to reach me, go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Look for the book a session tab. Very straightforward from there. Big thanks for all those that use the super thanks, the donate tab on the website. Greatly appreciated. Uh, until we meet again, I'm going to send out a lot of goodwill and tremendous love to you and your families. Take care. I'll see you all again very soon.